Good evening, fellow YouTuber. Yes. And I've been quite busy this day. So this is the second uh, interview that I did live on FB today. Hello, friends. Good evening to everyone. We have a special uh, guest for tonight. Um, she is, uh, she's very familiar to most of us. Her name is uh, Janet uh, Toral. Hello, Janet. Hi, Ron. Thank you very much for having me in your program. You know, it's I who should uh, be thanking you because uh, I, your uh, very prompt reply encouraged me to to share this video to a lot of people because uh, I, I felt that uh, your topic is important uh, for the speech, uh, for, your, for the event. Okay, you'll be speaking it at the event. But um, I felt that I needed a lot of clarifications um, to appreciate, to appreciate what you were, what you are about to do on on an event in in uh, in Myanmar, right? It's in Myanmar. Yeah, because uh, Magento organized an event, which is an e-commerce uh, conference in Myanmar, and uh, it's my second time to go there to speak, no. And what makes Myanmar interesting is that it is one of the many countries in the world who still don't have an e-commerce law. So mm -hmm. when they invite participants or, or speakers like me, the idea there is how can they, what, what insight can they get in formulating their country's e-commerce law. And where I'm coming from would be my experience when we, when we were lobbying for the passage of the e-commerce law. And at the same time, of course, through the years, recognizing what has happened, like the coronavirus cyber crime law, data privacy, anti-voyeurism, anti-pornography, anti-cyber crime law, among other things. So I guess it's all about encapsulating uh, the lessons learned. Although the advantage of countries like Myanmar only formulating an e-commerce law right now is that they can, they can take advantage of all the lessons learned of various mm -hmm. countries when mm -hmm. implementing their own e-commerce law. Hindi mo alam, nakaka-worry nakaka nga lang bumiyahe kasi di ba yung end ko. Kaya, kaya nagtatanong-tanong na nga ako kung pwede ba kami mag-video mag conference o na worst case scenario kasi um, yung second hands, yung second secondary spread ngayon ng ENCO, medyo na, nagkakaroon na ng record eh. So there's a lot of concern on that right now. Kaya, mm -hmm. kaya I think I will eventually decide until last minute, magde-decide talaga ako kung magla-live appearance ako o magbe-video kon appearance sa <laughs> lang ako. Ayun. Oh. Now, oh, friends, you've uh, more or less... Um heard uh, an overview of what we are about uh, to do tonight. See, uh, Janet, I'd like to do four things okay, for mm -hmm. tonight. The first is um, I'd like to know more about your work. What what uh, do you do? What exactly do you do? I have a, a notion. I have an understanding. But uh, most of my followers, uh, mm, a little vague pa siguro sa kanila a little vague power of what you do. And the second thing I'd like to discuss would be, what is the event that you are going to be speaking to? Okay. And then the third would be this, the topic that you are going to speak about. We'd like to know more about it. And the fourth thing would be, uh, uh, I, you will be a panelist too in that event, right? You will That's be a right. Panelist. That's so right. I'd like to more or less uh, understand your perspective on when you join that panel mm -hmm. okay so we'll proceed with the first uh, uh, topic and um, i prepared a, a short video of uh, of your career oh your okay career. <laughs> so uh, uh I'm, i'll be streaming this now okay to introduce the first part of our discussion okay
Okay, so uh, uh, Janet, so that was a, a short video of uh, of uh, I, I got your photos from your FB page. About, Thank you. Uh, your <laughs> and uh, so maybe the the first uh, thing I really would like to know is um, this one. You are an you are an e-commerce okay e-commerce digital marketing branding leadership guide trainer coach okay? this is uh, what i saw in your fb page so could you please um, uh, clarify uh, some of the details here like for example leadership guide trainer quite familiar but the uh, e-commerce in general um uh what is e-commerce in in um, uh, from your uh, perspective uh, e-commerce from the con context of the Philippine e-commerce law or RA 8792 is all forms of electronic transaction, whether it comes in the form of commercial and non-commercial matter. No? Mm -hmm. And uh, in my case, from I have a website called digitalfilipino.com. So mm -hmm. I started that website back in 1999 and I use it as a platform to educate people about e-commerce. Uh, I was part of an organization called the Philippine Internet Commerce Society that I co-founded uh, back in 1997, and we lobbied for the passage of the Philippine e-commerce law at that time. And at the moment, I also teach e-commerce. We have a certified e-commerce specialist program, certified e-commerce entrepreneur, and certified e-commerce professional. Uh, that's where we teach uh, e-commerce and digital marketing, and I also rolled out e-commerce training programs uh, with in partnership with other uh, government agencies and uh, private sector, teaching people how to do e-commerce. Let's say if you uh, if somebody were to announce, oh, I'm selling something on Facebook, is she engaged in e-commerce? Um, technique, yes. Uh, as long as there's uh, electronic communication and there's a transaction involved, no, uh, there's meeting of the minds. Uh, then that is in the, that is e-commerce already. Uh, of course, uh, sabi ko nga kanina, it can be in the form of commercial and non-commercial. That is why the e-commerce law paved the way for electronic documents to be admissible as evidence in court. Pag sinabi natin non-commercial, for example, Rome, may nanira sa'yo online, inaway-away ka sa FB, gusto mo siyang demanda for libel, yung paggamit mo ng FB post niya as evidence was paved way because of the e-commerce law because it recognized all forms of uh, electronic documents as evidence whether it's for commerce or non-commerce. Let's say in, in my case, for example, I, I usually buy plants mm. sa FB. There are a lot of sellers of plants mm -hmm. and... Um, uh, we, we agree to, I agree to pay her through LBC, LBC payments, mm -hmm. and then she delivers the product to me. Oh, in order but, mo yun online eh. So the mere uh -huh. fact in order mo siya online, e-commerce na yun. Okay. As long we, as, as long as there is a meeting of the minds. So technically, mm -hmm. nagkaroon na kayo tiyatawag na electronic contract. Mm -hmm. And then another friend of, of, of mine, he, she, she's doing some business. She announces that she is selling these products. Okay? And then they meet up, they meet up to collect. She will mm. collect, they meet up, and then she will purchase the products, and then mm. they will meet up again to deliver the product. Oh, as, long that, as, nag, as long as nag, nagkaroon ng uh, involvement yung online, e-commerce siya. So what an example dyan, yung Grab. No, you downloaded mm -hmm. the Grab app and then nag-book ka ng ride and then nagpahatid ka. Nung hinatid ka, saka mo binayarang yung driver. Pero the mere fact na binook mo yung ride online through the app, that's already e-commerce. Kaya a lot of people are actually be doing e-commerce now without them knowing it. Mm -hmm, I see. So and like then, you, mm -hmm. for example, you have this program, you invited a guest. So nagkaroon tayo ng meeting, nangyari to. So technically, tayong dalawa, nagkaroon na tayo ng e-commerce transaction by agreeing to do this program. Mm -hmm, I see. And um, what about the digital marketing? What What is digital marketing? Uh, digital marketing, like how you do it, you promote your endeavors online, whether in the form of educating or whether in the form of uh, letting people know what choices they have 
or letting people know about the products and services that they can purchase or programs that they can watch. So all of these promotions and outreach efforts are referred to as digital marketing, including what what do you work on on so that you can be seen on search results. And when we talk about branding, what, uh, what um, branding naman? Uh, branding is how you position yourself online. No? Mm-hmm. So like in your case, how you call yourself. So in your case, you're branding yourself under the Philippine corporate address book page. So for me, branding for me can be about positioning myself as a guide, trainer, and coach in the area of e-commerce, digital marketing, branding, and leadership. Mm-hmm, I see. Okay. And then, um, uh, by the way, for our viewers, if you wish to participate live, I sent a, a link if you would like to participate live. You may want to ask uh, uh, Janet some questions live. Okay. Mm-hmm. Now, Janet... The second uh, thing I'd like to discuss is the event that you are going to. Okay? Mm-hmm. So before we go to the discussion, I'd like to, to show a video. It, it's uh, basically a slideshow okay, mm-hmm. about the event. So, uh, Janet, this um, the event is uh, called the Third Emerging uh, Asia E-Commerce Line Mile Logistics uh, Summit. So, um, what um, what are these uh, uh, details? First, uh, you mentioned you last mile. What is last, uh, last mile? mile yung logistics? The it's uh, the, the delivery to the person, making the product reach the person. Uh-huh. Oh, making the... So this, is, uh, this event is organized by Magenta Global. It is a company uh-huh. based in Singapore. Mm-hmm. I see. Why, why is it called last mile? Oh, yun ang term na ginagamit nila eh. So yung making the products reach the person. So last mile na siya hanggang sa makaabot na sa tao. Is this also being used in the Philippines? I mean, yes, yes, yes. Kinagamit in siya. So uh, this, pero it's really more of a sector terminology, kung bagano. What do you mean by sector te- terminology? Kung yun, kung kung nandung ka sa play sa industry na yon, term term yan sa logistics industry yung last mile, yung last mile delivery, oh, yung making it reach see. the consumer. Oh. Sa logistics industry. Uh, ginagamit siya. So, it's a common term sa logistics at sa mga career players. What, what if you're not in the logistics industry? But... Well, technically, we just call it delivery. Yes. De- <laughs> uh, delivery. I, I Ay, kaya na siya so... conference eh. Kaya siguro, medyo pang, ano, pang friendly ng term, di ba? Mm-hmm. I see. <laughs> and, uh, it, it, it highlights emerging Asia. Why does it... Uh... Mm, ah, siya, uh, they call it para, kasi since, since yung mga countries like Myanmar, mga developing pa lang sila, yung para may mga di ba, like right now, when you look at the latest uh, report by VR Social, parang 55% pa lang ng people all over the world are connected to the internet. So marami pa rin mga countries na hindi pa rin nakaka-penetrate ang e-commerce sa kanila. Mm-hmm. So, pag sinabi natin emerging, ito yung mga countries na parang ngayon pa lang sila nagsisimula na mag-take advantage ng e-commerce and online. Mm-hmm. Which includes the Philippines? Uh, which includes Myanmar. 
Myanmar only or Oh, uh, hindi kasi itong event kasi na to parang mga developing countries eh. So you talking about Myanmar, uh -huh. Cambodia, uh -huh. yung mga yung mga emerging countries pa. I see, I see. So more of uh your uh, assisting this uh but that event no? yeah that event is really focused on those countries kaya nga, when i got invited there i took an interest kasi syempre um it's it's different for them connecting now kasi they're connecting in an environment na very dynamic na i mean in comparison to us when we connected 20 years ago there's a lot of difference with what the internet was back in 1994, 1995. So, what is your experience in 1994, 1995? Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah. Mm -hmm. Parang, siguro, mm -hmm. So, they're adjusting with everything that is happening. Mm -hmm. Does it mean your Philippines is, has already emerged? Oh, no man. Oh, oh. I mean, when, when you look at the where where the top social media user in the world, diba? Mm -hmm. uh, in comparison to other countries, we spend the most time online uh, using social media and one of the heaviest users of the internet. So mm -hmm. definitely, uh, kaito pano advance tayo. Although, syempre, in comparison to the revenue sales revenue that is happening online, a lot of it is unrecorded kasi hindi naman lahat nangyayari through direct platforms. A lot of the negotiations, purchasing are happening offline at maraming hindi nakakapture na transactions. For example, sa real estate industry, maraming nagsasara ng mga deal, nag-e-scouting, nag naghahanap ng kotse, naghahanap ng real estate online, pero hindi naman nare-record yun eh. Mm -hmm. so Kaya maraming na nangyayari. How would you assess yung the, the level of uh, e-commerce in the Philippines? Uh, when you look at the e-commerce uh, performance in Philippines, more than half of Filipino internet users are already buying products online. Yun yung recorded ng VR social, no? And I think that's uh, that that only shows how much uh, we have grown. Kaya nga, malakas na yung mga sites kagaya ng Lazada, Shopee, and then you now have applications like Grab, Food Panda, no? At mga iba pang mga platforms na talagang ginagamit na ng mga Pilipino. Mm -hmm. So, I guess that says a lot as to how active we are na. And of course, uh, the travel industry has also greatly benefited from this uh, movement. But with the recent nga na nangyayari, medyo affected siya. Pero it also means na yung e-commerce natin will also grow in the areas of services. Yung mga freelancing, work from home, no? At ito, mga content publishers na kagaya sa iyo, marami, marami na ngayon nasa influencer marketing sector trying to monetize their content no? through YouTube vlogging, among other things. So all of these are manifestation of growth pagdating sa e-commerce. And this is a summit. This event is a summit. Uh, why a uh, summit? Why not a conference? Why not? Uh... Um, well, I cannot answer that kasi yung organizer mas nakakalang kung bakit summit ang tinawag nila. Pero normally kasi pag sinabi kasi nating summit, it's a gathering eh. Diba? Para ba people come together. So I guess because uh, majority of the speakers are also are coming from different countries. Kaya summit siya. Mm -hmm. Alright. And then the, the third would be okay, now we go to your topic now. <laughs> okay, mm. your topic is about uh, adapting a new model for e-commerce law and um, I think um, yeah I think uh, siguro to summarize lang what I will be discussing there kasi like in the Philippines na nangyari kasi sa atin when we created our e-commerce law uh, nag-focus muna tayo do sa basic na e-commerce law which is recogni recognition ng electronic documents as evidence mm -hmm. and shall not be denied legal admissibility because it is in electronic form recognition ng digital signatures for recognition of uh, individuals in a, in a transaction and the recognition ng hacking or cracking as a crime no yun yung basic premise under the e-commerce law and then later on nagkaroon tayo ng data privacy law that recognizes the right of individuals to protect their personal information and the responsibilities of people collecting information in so far as how the info of people can be used no mm -hmm. and then later on nagkaroon din tayo ng mga laws kagaya ng 
uh, voyeurism, yung hindi ka pwedeng basta mag-shoot ng video ng tao o gamitin yung content ng iba ng patago ng walang consent, no? Uh, it's a violation of privacy, although the data privacy law already covers that also. Ang interesting sa data privacy law, meron tayong pwede kang protected yung privacy mo kahit patay ka na. No? Pwede mm-hmm. yung air mo, yung designated air mo, pwede niyang i-protect yung privacy mo. Um, and then nagkaroon din tayo ng anti, yung anti-cyber crime law. So that basically penalizes different forms of cyber crime law. So when we talk about adopting a new model law for an e-commerce law, yung mga bago ngayon na players na ngayon pa lang magkakaroon ng policy, pwede nilang pagsamasamahin to in one law na capturing yung basic elements pero at the same time um, leave enough room for customization. Like for example, ito yung default na nasa law pero if the Supreme Court will issue rules, then yung rules ng Supreme Court ang magpaprevail. That way, kung meron mga changes, hindi yung punta tayo ng punta ng Congress para mag-appeal ng changes because matagal gawin yun eh. Hindi naman basta-basta nag approve ng changes ang Congress. Mm-hmm. Um, and then, meron din tayo mga tinatawag na international treaties na pinupush ng United Nations and encouraging countries to become member signatories. So, yung mga bagong mag adapt ng e-commerce law pa lang ngayon, pwede nilang gawin na yung mga laws nila mag adapt na dun sa mga treaties na yon like yung electronic uh, communication convention, uh, yung international contracts para ang hirap kasi kung halimbawa mag e-commerce transaction tayo, biglang iba ang batas sa country mo, iba yung batas sa country ko. So, kanino yung mag So, pwedeng yung international trade component, pwede na rin siyang uh, ma-integrate na sa mga bagong laws na pwede pang i-craft. Mm-hmm. So, those are, the, those are some of the things that can be considered when adopting a new model for an e-commerce law, including na rin yung pag-recognize ng online dispute resolution para kung may mga problema yung mga consumers, yung mga buyers and sellers in a transaction. Ang nangyayari kasi ngayon, basta sinasubmit lang siya sa isang consumer protection agency pwede ka naman magkaroon ng online dispute resolution na unit, i-identify mo talaga siya sa law, bigyan mo siya ng budget para kung merong mga magtatransact right from the start, pwede yun na magkocover sa kanila para protected both yung merchant at yung seller. Am I correct to assume, to understand that the Philippines has adopted this new model? Um, hindi pa lahat, no? Kasi may mga conventions tayo na kahit na signatory tayo, kailangan niyang irat- kailangan siyang i-ratify ng Senate mm-hmm. para maging magkaroon siya ng legal effect for international contracts. Although I guess kaya tayo hindi pa nagmamadali kasi yung international trade kasi natin were more of an importer rather than an exporter. Pero uh, pero kung magagawa natin yun na maaga, mas paganda kasi different jurisdiction, merong conflict of laws, uh, magkakaiba ang customs policy, magkakaiba rin ang logistics policies nila, and hindi lahat ng jurisdiction can give legal effect to electronic communications sa mga international contracts, yung accepting inter- electronic communications as evidencing for Mm-hmm. And sometimes iba-iba yung pagkaka-understood, no? Kaya, kaya may mga policies na bago na kung hindi man natin i-amend yun, no? Mag-recognize tayo, mag-sign tayo ng mga treaties at magkakaroon tayo ng uh, recognition. So kahit sa ang bansa siya, i-honor siya kasi signatory tayo dun sa treaty. Yun yung gusto natin. Kasi merong the breach kasi or the problems can arise from the buyer like halimbawa hindi niya bayaran na ng tama o kaya bigla siya mag-back out sa transaction o kaya may breach naman sa part ng seller like halimbawa hindi siya nag-conform doon sa napag-agrihan kung pareho lang yung parties na titrade sa, sa, sa isang bansa then their local laws will apply however when there are parties uh, trading from different countries and each country has different regulations then doon misa nagiging nagkakaroon ng konting technicality. How far is the Philippines from fully adapting this new model? For uh, yung mga new model, well, yun, kailangan talaga maratify yung conventions, uh, masign na yung mga treaties, parang hindi pa tayo 
umaabot doon. Um, at least na that we heard, we have heard of na naging signatory na tayo, no. Um, pero kahit naman na uh, medyo nakukuli tayo diyan, it doesn't stop naman a lot of people here from trading internationally. We're saying lang na if we are able to uh, have these treaties signed ahead and get more countries to sign the treaties, then kung export and perspective, it's going to benefit their players also. Kung tignan mo siya from an importer perspective, then it will also give you confidence when importing products and services from other countries. Mm -hmm. All right. And then lastly, our agenda, this is your, uh, you will be a panelist in this uh, how can policymakers, industry, and other stakeholders work together to deliver the right conditions to drive e-commerce? So, um, yeah, kaya sinasabi natin na uh, normally we we really need to for countries who would like to make e-commerce grow in their respective economies. Malaking bagay yung meron silang Philippine e meron silang e-commerce roadmap. Kasi yung e-commerce roadmap is like a blueprint na nagka-agree yung mga parties involved kung paano sila gagalaw insofar as e-commerce is concerned, like how will they improve their infrastructure, how will they educate their MSMEs para makapag-trade sila online, how will they protect the buyers in their respective economies para hindi sila maluloko, how will they enable the environment uh, para bumaba yung cost of doing online payments and making online logistics possible at a lower cost also. At uh, ganun na rin, no? when it comes to importing and exporting, reducing the barriers to foster international trade through e-commerce and protect and uh, ensuring that there are policies in place para yung mga products and services na binibenta online safe din sa mga tao. At kung magkakaroon ng mga problems, meron tayong process to facilitate the, these disputes. At ganun din kung meron mga wrongful elements, mauhuli sila. And, ma, and of course, to make all of these in an uptrend stream, so kailangan continuous din yung education, how can we introduce uh, e-commerce, digital marketing, um, and all of these related technologies to the young people so that yung mga future generation and users, sila yung magsiset kasi ng pakte kung saan pupunta ang e-commerce, no? Dahil para naman sa kanila talaga yan. And ano pa ba? Yung, I think yun yung pinaka-essence. And then at the same time, mobilizing the government and the private sector, having regular dialogue, always ensuring that um, we are on the same trajectory or on the same direction para yung government din, gusto rin natin, magkaroon siya ng capacity to accept electronic payment and render or deliver the services to the public also electronically para mabawasan yung red tape and bureaucracy. So in the case of the Philippines, how would you assess the stakeholders in the Philippines working together? Uh, marami na naman tayo mga efforts, may mga associations tayo no, that uh, the private sectors are taking the lead. Although, of course, gusto sana natin mas maging efficient pa yung government kasi karamihan ng mga transactions natin sa government, pinabayaran pa rin natin manually rather than bayaran natin siya online. So, medyo doon naiiwanan yung government. Lalo na yung mga LGUs, no? Kasi yung assessment, uh, how much do we have to pay, lahat yan, kailangan pumunta ka pa para malaman mo eh. So, I hope umabot tayo, hopefully, no? Uh, who knows, maybe by the time we reach uh, a change in presidency sa uh, new administration, makita natin siya. Kasi ngayon may mga efforts na rin eh. Kaya lang, hindi natin kasi alam kung may implement siya agad no? within the span of the three-year term ng isang mayor. So, eh syempre marami rin silang inaasikaso. So, baka kung hindi nila ma-implement yan hanggang next year, then siguro aabangan natin yung next leadership doon sa mga LGUs kung kaya na nila implement yung makapag-accept ng payments electronically. Mm -hmm. Oh, thank you so much, Janet. And maybe to close our program, how, would you like to invite uh, guests from the emerging Asia who might be listening uh, tonight? To ah, of course. Uh, we look forward to meeting the participants joining the emerging Asia uh, e-commerce and last mile logistics summit at Yangon, Myanmar. So 
uh, whether you are tuning into the event uh, at the event or for the speakers who will be there and for those who will be delivering their talks online. I'm sure it's something that uh, we all look forward to and we look forward learning from one another. I'm glad that the event is still pushing through, although I know that there are a lot of challenges. Because I'm sure, Ron, you've been seeing some of the events are being canceled already, right? Yes, uh, yes. Yesterday, I received a notification about one Asian event and one event in Cebu getting canceled, no? Kasi nga, dahil nga lahat nag-iingat, no? At saka siguro, affected din yung participation sa mga events. And, uh, but, I, but I think this will open a lot of opportunities for us na baka pagtagal-tagal, yeah, magkiklik yung mga online summits, online events na kagaya ng ganito as a means for people to learn more uh, about it online. And, I'm sure, and of course, Rom, I'm very glad to see you doing this online. I'm sure... Oh, thank uh, you. Marami matutulungan yung sa mga followers mo para sa mga ganitong klaseng content. Yeah, thank you so much. In fact, I'd like to share with you that you are one of the persons uh, who have uh, inspired me also to to venture into this uh, uh, activity. Mm. And, you know, that's why when I learned about this uh, speech, I thought it would be a good opportunity for us to 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 engage our followers using mm -hmm. this uh, this media. Pero ikaw, Rom, di ba, you also buy products and services online. Ano yung nagiging challenge, challenges mo sa pagbili online? O ganito, na nagpapublish ka ng content online? Um, uh, uh, technology, I think yung technology, I need to learn. need to learn the technology. Mm -hmm. But pero, when you mentioned yung buying, may fear ako. I have this fear of... Uh, uh, buying online because I've tried it, uh, the products did not arrive, ah. they're not delivered. Okay, and, kailangan and... Sayo, COD muna. <laughs> 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 or, or you're more into purchase of services, yung mga web hosting, yung dung ka gumagastos. Soft, yeah, yeah, software, ganyan. Oh. Yeah, but no. there was a time nung plants, I, I bought a lot of plants. Ah, and so then yung, yung, yung books, I bought a lot of books. Some arrived, some did not. So, oh. And then yeah, I, yung, yung sa LBC type of, ano, I, 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 I lost uh, some money because I paid, but I wasn't able to receive the product. And then, mm. you know, yeah, but may I'm not experience, uh, ah. Yeah, but I'm not discouraged. I, in mm -hmm. fact, I, I tried uh, exploring PayPal. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, I able I was able to receive some money, mm -hmm, okay? mm -hmm. not only to buy but to receive. We had a fundraising, mm -hmm. so that was an experience. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but it, it's still not consistent. I mm -hmm. still would like to be more active in it. Uh -oh. And then I have I have some friends, because a lot of friends who who would like to engage, but in this selling activity but they don't know how mm. that's why um, when i approach you that is what i have in mind Pero Small, ikaw, uh, you plan to venture into e-commerce this year yourself um right now i'm i'm just into uh, communication uh, okay. online broadcasting in the meantime uh -oh. so i have not monetized this it's not I, yet it's not like, i think it's uh, not yet uh oh but not uh, yet. I'm open uh, to it. <laughs> I think the uh, challenge kasi, no, maski sa YouTube kasi, kahit na maka 1,000 subscribers ka, pag hindi mo na hit yung number of minutes, di ba? Maski sa Facebook, pag hindi mo na hit yung number of minutes, parang hindi ka makakapag-monetize. Kaya, in my case, uh, I find platforms like Patreon mm -hmm. to be very helpful. Kasi, uh, have you encountered Patreon? Not yet. Not, what is uh, Patreon? Patreon is a platform where you can, let's say you have an advocacy, meron kang mga gustong gawin na project, so you can ask people to pledge uh, to support your advocacy. So halimbawa, kagaya nito, this program of yours is an advocacy, right? So you can encourage followers to support you in this advocacy by supporting your Patreon page. Parang funding mo siya. Para hindi ka umaasa sa advertisers or encouraging the community to support you. I see. Oh, so I sa akin, ginagawa ko siya. Ginagawa ko siya sa mga content ko. Meron akong uh, Patreon na page. I'll share it to you para makita mo siya. Oh, sige. Thank you so much. <laughs> okay. So, so um, uh, good luck 
Janet, for your uh, uh, speaking engagements in Myanmar. Okay. And, <laughs> and to all our to all our guests, thank you for tuning in. So Janet, yes. thank you for uh, spending time. Thank with you very me. much to Good. the viewers of Philippine Corporate uh, Address Book, and thank you very much for watching this uh, session. Oh, okay, we're signing off now. Bye. All right, friends. So that was it. That was my last broadcast for tonight in FB Live and sharing it now with uh, my YouTube friends. Now, Rom Kumagun signing off for tonight.